good morning and thank you very much for having us at the National Manufacturing Debate. Uh, my name is James Fudge, I'm Head of Events and Member Services at the Manufacturing Technologies Association and I am delighted to be joined today by our CEO, James Selker. Thank you very much, James, and much more importantly, thank you to everyone who's watching this and thank you so much to Professor Mark Jolly and his team at Cranfield for putting on the national manufacturing debate once again under very difficult circumstances. Um, and uh, it's such an important event in the UK manufacturing calendar. And I'm really delighted to be invited to take part once again. So James, for those people that don't know much about the Manufacturing Technologies Association, can you give us a quick overview of who we are and what we do? Um, the Manufacturing Technologies Association members as opposed to the association itself, are the people and the companies, of course, that provide all the technology at the start of the manufacturing process. They provide all the technology needed into engineering-based factories. And so what does that mean? That means mach sophisticated machine tools, it means additive manufacturing machines, it means sophisticated robotics and automation, it means sophisticated um, a software in order to be able to do the design and manufacturing. Um, it means data collection software. It means surface engineering uh, equipment and capability. It means metrology, literally anything that goes to world leading factories in the UK at the very beginning of the manufacturing process. And we, of course, exist to help our members reach manufacturers in the UK who want to improve their competitiveness. So as we look to emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic, what would be your greatest learning or insight? Um, and what do you think next year looks like for UK business? Uh, you know, what should the priorities be for the advanced manufacturing sector? I'm obviously not in a position to predict the future. Um, I think that would be particularly foolhardy uh, under current uncertain uh, times. And also, um, let's face weakness in, in many of the sectors. But I think one thing that we all should really hang on to is we will emerge from COVID. We will emerge from Brexit. We will handle the challenges. Um, and you manufacturing is incredibly resilient and forward looking. And, um, and such an important part of the UK, a lot of uh, traditional overseas investment has come in because of our innovation in the UK. It's come in because of flexible and skilled labour. It's come in because of our English speaking skills. It's come in because of our world class financial um, uh, uh, capability and in industry. Um, so many reasons uh, to manufacture in the UK. And I would love to see increased investment all around in, in such a wonderful industry. So just to give a specific bright spot, I was recently at a round table where Alan Cook CBE was speaking. <clears throat> and for those of you who, are, uh, who don't know Alan, uh, he's a very eminent person who is uh, chairman of the Valley Manufacturing Council, but also chair of HS2. And HS2 is an enormous project of national pride. It was wonderful to hear Alan's vision be able to procure at least 90% of the spend here in the UK. And so that's opportunity for UK manufacturing, of course, but also for services, because to be able to build world-class stations that are environmentally and net zero friendly, the most advanced rail network and technology, signaling technology to go with that. And of course, the 60 road stock that will be needed. It's just wonderful. So. It isn't at all dark. There are massive bright spots. And really, as I will continue to tell everybody, there probably hasn't been a better time to invest, despite the irony of that statement, considering current uncertainty. So the other thing I think that COVID has really exposed is the fragility of some of the UK supply chains. Do you think we now need to be looking at being less dependent on our sort of global supplies, or do you think this creates opportunities for UK companies? Now, obviously, global trade is here to stay, 
for the long term. Um, but certainly COVID has exposed a lot of fragility in some supply chains. And it's also highlighted the importance of having sovereign capability in critical areas like food, um, healthcare, defense. Uh, and the good news, of course, is that manufacturing technology lends itself to be much more aligned to, to manufacture viably to demand, which of course is a much more sustainable solution anyway, reducing the need for long distance transport, overproduction, waste and stock. It's just the most enormous opportunity really for the UK to re reindustrialize using the most advanced technology. Now you use the word sustainability there. It's been sort of banded around quite a lot um, for the last decade or so. What does that really mean in terms of UK manufacturing and how does sustainability apply to the UK manufacturing sector? Well, we all know that sustainability really equals common sense. Uh, obviously, as a human race, we have uh, been rather negligent in, in the way that we have treated Earth's finite resources. Obviously, there is an urgent need for us as a race to deal, to slow down uh, the carbon emissions and indeed reverse them in a relatively very short period of time. Um, but I believe that UK engineering is really up to be a key part of the solutions to that. So sustainability, what does it mean to UK manufacturing? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a popular word at the moment, as you might imagine. So if we divide that into two main areas, one is, of course, making manufacturing and the processes and the factories more sustainable in themselves. Of course, the other half of that is coming up with the innovative solutions that we will be able to not only employ UK ourselves to help uh, reverse the damage we've done, but also, of course, export that um, to the rest of the world who can... Uh, obviously do the same in terms of their sustainability goals, um, but also help improve the wealth and welfare of UK citizens. So if we go very quickly back to how do we make manufacturing itself more sustainable, really, of course, by <clears throat> educating uh, ourselves, both those involved in manufacturing and wider, uh, 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 better, um, employing technology, of course, which allows better productivity, less waste, making more actually in the market to reduce uh, logistic needs, recycling closer to home, processes like additive manufacturing that are still relatively young in production. They, of course, use less material, often we're in exotic materials that have to be imported, often from the Far East, huge distances. Um, obviously using the latest digital technologies to do things that we call digital twins that really uh, takes away the need to make so many prototypes uh, and, and first run attempts, etc. So this idea of being able to get this closer to this right first time uh, really is uh, uh, getting there. It's absolutely fantastic. So of course, going back to the other huge second part of that of using technology to be able to manufacture products that accelerate our process and those of other countries towards net zero i mean we already have an excellent record in the uk uh, not only of innovation but manufacturing for example uh, the uh, windmills for the offshore wind farms uh, that's been a huge um, uh, success over the last 10 or 20 years and will continue to grow as we've said why is it important to be doing this? Uh, I'm hoping it's obvious to everybody. Um, but obviously, we need to uh, reverse the enormous damage we've done. And perhaps people aren't quite aware that manufacturing in the, in the UK already contributes at least 15% of GDP in the UK. If we seize the opportunity and continue to invest at the right rate, when I say continue, I mean actually invest at the rate in, in uh, leadership skills uh, and in technical skills and of course in the technologies, um, we will be able to raise quite quickly the living standards for everybody here in the UK. 
now talking very much about the future, have you got any tips for the next generation that are coming into the advanced manufacturing and engineering sector and how they can help the future growth of the sector? Um, <clears throat> any tips for the new generation? That's a great question, James. Uh, yes, of course, and I'm, I'm bound to say, well, isn't it an exciting time to join our industry? Um, but I would like not just to extend that invitation to uh, budding uh, 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 young talent out there, but to people from every walk of life. There is such a huge opportunity for, for a massive diverse range of backgrounds and skills to come and help the UK uh, become a world, a, a much bigger world force in manufacturing and indeed therefore world trade. Um, for everybody's benefit. We are just starting the journey through the fourth industrial revolution. And it's probably never been more exciting. Um, and those days of um, the dark industrial uh, wastelands, etc., is when truly over. Uh, opportunity is really there for everybody. I would love to invite uh, everybody from experience down to the very young, please consider engineering and manufacturing as a fantastic career for you to be able to expend your talent. Now, finally, James, the national manufacturing debate has been a great week for bringing people together and it continues to be so. But are there any events that the MTA run or are looking to hold um, that people can find out more information or even see some of this technology in action? Um, I don't know if everyone realises, but the MTA are very lucky to own and run the MAC show, which is the national show for engineering and manufacturing technology here in the UK. And it is run normally every two years. Uh, and because of COVID, the next one is to be MAC 2022 in April. Um, but we are, of course, running a virtual event in January where you can have a, a if like an advanced look at some of the amazing technology that is going to be there on demonstration as if it's running in a factory. Pure cutting and additive manufacturing and everything there to be able to see live. And so I would urge everyone and of course invite everyone uh, to get involved in the national manufacturing debate uh, in, in looking at, at the latest uh, uh, tips and technology to be able to improve productivity. And uh, if you are interested in pursuing that, please do visit us at our website, backexhibitions.com, uh, to find out all the details you need. And again, once again, my huge thanks to everyone for listening, and indeed Mark Jolly and his team for putting on such a wonderful national manufacturing debate. James, thanks very much for joining us today.